there guys welcome to the channel today we're playing with this 2001 dually tow truck dodge ram 3500 for those wondering this is will and todd in real life short and fat tall and normal get what you get so this truck's cherry because it has 107,000 miles on it the interior is nice the leather interior it's very comfortable seats are not like beat down they're still full of luck I guess you'd say they're very comfortable to sit in um, and this guy found this truck and he wanted to make an ultimate towing beast out of this thing and he wanted to know how far could you go with the VP44 and he had a whole laundry list of items he wanted to put in this truck and so we put them in for him and we're, we're gonna now test it we have not tested this truck yet uh, let's talk about what modifications he did to this truck so he, he could uh, rip a trade on the road at any speed he wanted and uh, go in the hood first yeah, let's, go in, let's go in the hood, go in the hood. Okay, so first thing we want to address was tuning. We need a Quadzilla Adrenaline. You cannot turn the boost up or it will defuel. The computer's too smart. So you need a tuner that can allow it to make more boost and give you control of the fueling. What do we do for fueling? And this thing we got, a, some of our, is this our budget builder injectors? This yeah. Guy? This is our budget builder 7x12. So that's a pretty big injector for towing. So that's why we're excited to do this because we want to see how well it works. Because in addition to adding the big fuel, he also added some big air. 10 years ago, you couldn't put that big of an ejector on a street truck with a VP because the tuning wasn't there where you could detune it on the low end to make it clean. So only the race trucks were getting those. Now we're putting a borderline race size injector with the Quadzilla. And what do you do for air over there, Todd? So this is our ultimate towing compound kit that we make for the 12 and 24 valve. This is our second gen towing kit, which consists of a K27 and a Board Warner 369. And that should be enough air for this fuel because even with these big injectors, we still have a limiting factor, and that's the VP44. Yeah, let me tell you a little about the VP44. I used to have a 99. I did everything I could to get over 500 horsepower, and I never quite got there. I got to 499. So to me, if you make more than 500 horse with a VP44 on a real dyno, like, like a Mustang like we have, you're doing something special. Back in the day, they used to make a hot rod VP44. What that was was a high output cam with the standard output plunger assembly. And that gave you quick injection rate and the same volume of fuel as a stock output. Well, they didn't really add very much power. On a stock truck, they felt peppy, but really when you get up around 500 horse, they're all kind of about the same. Later on, there's a guy called Monster Pump Mike and even Industrial Injection, they had a Dragon Fire VP44. Well, Super. nobody makes them anymore. They're all been discontinued. All you can get is standard VP44. So you're kind of, if you want to race and you want to run like, you know, low 12s or faster, this isn't the best platform. That's why you guys do P pump 24 valve. But if you want a good towing truck, starts well, clean, idles. EGT control with that variable timing. Yeah, you variable timing, all that benefit. This is a great truck for a, a work truck hauler, daily driver. So the great thing about this particular truck is this would be like, Dodge's version of the 604. It's still very reliable, not in that way, but it's less desirable. Because of its limited power potential, these don't have the value of like a real clean P-pump truck. So you can pick up a low mile, real clean truck like this without breaking the bank. Then you can do the modifications, get the power up, and make it real reliable. Some other things we did to this truck to make it really good. For one, whenever we do compound turbos that we want reliable, we like to do O-rings or firings. And so we have O-ring this head and we run head studs. That way we're not gonna blow head gaskets. Um, also, the owner of this truck, he really wanted to tow hard. So we upgraded the intercooler and the radiator. These are both Mishimoto units and they should uh, give us a lot better intercooling and hopefully keep our engine temps under control. All so, the, the factory radiators were good. They were copper cord and they were nice, but they're all old now yeah. where they've degraded or they've cracked or leaked. And so it's like in the aftermarket, the Mishimoto aluminum seems to be the best one we've seen that's similar to the stock factory one and they have a lifetime warranty that's why we really like them is you get in an accident and you smoke this radiator they'll fix it one time but they got your back which is yeah, really nice. cool so yeah now we've got the tuning dialed in we've got the 7 by 12 injectors with turbos we have a power driven diesel 650 horsepower transmission this engine will definitely make enough power to smoke the stock transmission no problem so we had to upgrade to a triple disc torque converter in our 650 horsepower package and this thing should be this needs to be a towing machine. I mean, it should get good mileage, the variable timing, start easy. And uh, we're gonna put this in the dyno after our tow test and see what kind of power we can make. And I think really the limiting factor is the VP44. We should have enough ejector and turbo to do well over 500, 
but will the VP44 support it? Don't know. One other thing that helps the VPs, and everybody knows you need to upgrade that lift pump. Lift pump struggles. The factory ones, they take out the VP. I think that's a lot of where they get the bad rap is bad lift pumps. So we put one of our Predator belt driven mechanical lift pumps on here, rock solid fuel pressure, and we're hoping that'll give us that edge to push this over 500 horse to the tire. But uh, until we get on the dyno, we won't know. But honestly, in the towing application, how much do you think we can keep cool? 300, 350 horsepower maybe? Yeah, with a variable timing, we can get a little bit better than you can with the P pump because we can hit on the timing higher than you would on a, on a standard P pump. But yeah, you're still limited to the radiator, which hopefully this is a good radiator that can keep it cool. So 350 should be my guess to the ground, which is a lot more than the than the, factory. The 160, 585 it came with. <laughs> All right, let's load up and go ride. Let's go. All right, so we're on the road now. Uh, we are pulling a trailer. I would guess the trailer would be, be between five and 6,000 pounds. We got Will's, uh, we got Will's new race car back there. We'll have more about that later. So we're heading up uh, the mountain right now. Give us a good test. It's a hot, it's a hot July day, kind of muggy outside. So kind of worst case scenario for high EGT and engine cooling. Let's see what this thing can do. So far it's, uh, this trailer is ridiculously easy for the truck to pull, and it just, it just, no problem. So, if we go up the mountains here, we'll watch the EGT, we'll watch the engine cool it, and, and uh, see how she does. All right, so we've now climbed about 3,000 feet in the last five miles or so. It's a pretty nasty climb coming out of Cedar City up the mountain. I think it says 12% grade in some places. So that was a good climb. Yeah. We only got about 5,000 pounds behind the truck, but still, it's like your boat or, you know, a normal load yeah. you'd haul. And so it, power wise is at, at excess. I put on level zero. There's 10 levels we have, and this is just the, I don't think this is a custom tuning yet. This is just the, the thing that comes with the adrenaline. We have the a adrenaline zero. tuning. But even with that adrenaline tuning, those monster injectors, we have you know, I had to keep at level zero to keep EGT, you know, at full with a full pedal. You know what I mean? But at 8,000 feet, the air is pretty, pretty thin. So we're 45 pounds of boost coming up the hill. 45 pounds of boost coming up the hill. Coolant got a little warm at the end. So, yeah. so basically, you're at the limit of the cooling capacity, and you have total EGT control with yeah. that big of an injector, and you're well, level zero. <laughs> well, one thing I will say is, I did get into to engine coolant temperature and overdrive. This this road is not fast. You know, we're about 50, 55 miles an hour. We got one section where we got some speed and I let it go to overdrive. I had plenty of power to pull up, but the RPM was so low, the fan speed dropped. And that's when the coolant really shot up. So if I turn overdrive off and keep the fan, engine fan at a much higher RPM, it could control it pretty well. So just kind of a little interesting tidbit there. But it's second gen problems, you know, they don't have as big of a radiator as the newer trucks and I mean, we know guys that'll run the heater on in summer when they're climbing big hills, have extra cooling capacity. Heard a few guys actually adding a second radiator. But at the end of the day, the Cummins and the turbos and all that, it can handle it. And the tranny and the rear end and stuff will take it. The cooling system is still your Achilles heel on the really- second, The second gen truck. I mean, if we were loaded heavy, like 30,000 gross, you know, illegally heavy, yeah, you might've had to pull over on the way up here because you'd overheated the truck. Like. Yeah not a power it's a it's a cooling capacity you start playing with water wetter and all this other stuff and at the end of the day that's really your limitation so yeah the most powerful second gen truck probably was about a 235 horsepower crank 245 crank 245 crank and this is probably about 350 to the wheel so probably around 390 crank so you, you know when i had that going up the hill i was well well beyond the parameters Dodge engineered for the cooling capacity of this engine. So that's that's just reality. Now winter, we've noticed you can hot rod a oh, lot yeah. more up this canyon, but we're the dead of summer. But I mean, we're high enough now. I mean, it's what, 70 degrees out here? Yeah. I mean, it's it's 90 down in Cedar and it's 70 up here. I had, 75. I had the AC crank the whole time. I really wanted to test it out hard. So. Well, it's a good truck, reliable. I mean, is there anything you'd change? Well, I'd like to get some custom tuning. I think the low end feels too rich. So either we need to drop injector size or we need to see if we can pull more out with we, the custom. We can, because you can cut it clear, yeah. the map clear in half. So you can cut tons of duration out of so those injectors. Yeah, so we're gonna cut, I think we're gonna go back and do some custom tuning where, and we're gonna cut a bunch of low end fuel out because these monster injectors 
the tunes that come with this are just it's too aggressive on the low end for this big injector yeah let's throw it on the dyno and if it's 520 horsepower you probably go down two sizes of injectors and lose 20 horses all yeah if it's making 600 you know then don't drop injectors or you did something special there, so. Tuning, yeah <laughs> so let's go back to the shop let's do some play with the maps and uh, see what kind of power it makes So we are now back here at the shop. We did the dyno, well, no, we did the towing test yesterday and it towed very well, but the low end smoke was a real mess. We came back here and we tuned out a bunch of the low end smoke and it made a big difference. With the adrenaline, you can do that. Yeah. Other tuners, you can't. So it still has the seven by 12 injectors, still has a little bit of a puff at the bottom. We, we took out so much to where it actually had like a dead pedal. I didn't like it. So we put a little bit back in. So it has a little bit of puff at the bottom still. I think Tiny bit of idle haze at altitude. What you'd expect with, with uh, big injectors. those big injectors. It has, especially when you're in drive. If you put it in neutral, it's fine. If you put it in drive at a stop sign, the load, it's load. a little bit of a haze. Um, but now we're going to get in the dyno and see what this thing can actually do. So this is an all important thing because I have not dynoed this. We have not dyno this truck. So now we have no like, idea what to guess. So is a, this our contest? This is our contest. Our ever, ever day. Well, we first, contest. let's talk about the prize because we can never decide on the prize. What does the winner get? Hamburger? I'm trying to get off him because I'm fat. Okay. You should be off him too, to be honest. I should be. Hunting season's about to start. Yeah. Bragging rights until uh, the next we'll, dino event. We'll do a milkshake. Milkshake? Dairy Queen I'm milkshake. Good. They should like, they should like sponsor us or something because we have a milkshake. Dairy Queen. Or a Blizzard? Yes, that's what I mean. Blizzard. blizzard. Dairy yeah. Queen Blizzard. So winner gets a Blizzard paid for by the other person. Paid for so by that means people. I'm going to get a Blizzard paid for by Todd. Hasn't happened yet. Okay. So. And we're just guessing horsepower. Yeah, there's two things here. So you have an advantage in that you have been in, you've owned a VP44 truck. I have not driven this truck. And I have. So I think it's, it's kind of fair. So I've driven this truck, but you've owned one that you tried to do as much as you could out of. You got 499. 499.8. So what's never your, quite correct. So what's your, so if this beats 500, then that's, that'll be really sweet. But we have our questions. So what's your guess? Are we talking corrected or uncorrected? Uncorrected here. Uncorrected. uncorrected our, raw two. number. I'm going with 501. 501, uncorrected. Wow. So all I have to do is 502, and I can win anything over 500. I, I've got it. And 500, and you get anything under. Yeah. So, so you're playing prices right, or are you playing? Are you playing what you really think it's going to make? I was going to guess right around 500. So I might do. I might do. When I drove it, it's kind of tricky because these turbos spool so stinking fast. The torque really hits it. So you lay onto it and third gear locked up and it just just warps you in your seat. I was like, wow, this thing looks pretty dang good. But sometimes the torque number on these small turbos doesn't equate to the horsepower number. I bet you it's over a thousand foot pounds because of how quick it comes on. Horsepower, really, I want to be right at 500. So I'm going to be optimistic. Do you want under five? No, I'm going to be optimistic. I would say 525. I'm okay. going to be an optimist. Because if I was to change my guess, now that you've talked me through this more, I guess it's more like 485. 45 is your guess. Yeah, I'm going to drop it some. All right, so I'm going to stick with 525. You're at 45. I think it's a little spread. A little spread, so it's fair. 485 is my guess. I have no idea how heavy a two-wheel drive. I don't drive two-wheel drive trucks. Maybe it's a lighter truck than I'm used to because of the two-wheel drive. And it's warping me. But anyway, we're going to find out right now. We're going to get this on here, and we're going to go for a power run and see how power it makes. Let's check it out. Perfect. Okay, the first pull, it only did 450 uncorrected. That's raw, and this stingy dyno at altitude. Um, we went into the tuning and pulled back some of the pump stretch. Guys that don't speak VP44, what that means is there's a solenoid that opens that dumps the fuel that controls how long the injectors can spray. When you add to how long they spray, they call that pump stretch in Quadzilla Adrenaline. We pulled some of the pump stretch back, and it picked up a little bit more power. This run, we got 469. 0.9, essentially 470. So we picked up 20 horsepower, custom tuning the Quadzilla so far. We're gonna pull back a little bit more fuel and see if we can make some more power. All right, 
So once again, you have to buy me a blizzard once again. <laughs> I will say, Will is a king of low power guesses. <laughs> You've got the low power stuff down. <laughs> the big torque fooled me. The big torque fooled me. It does. You get you lock this up and you roll into it, and that it just hits you so hard. But well, what is saying? The, the corrected was like twelve eighty foot pounds. I mean, yeah. I mean that's a six seven hundred horsepower truck all day long. But it doesn't have the, the long. Just the RPM just doesn't. It can't. The the BP forty four can't hold the fuel. Or so. And then the towing compounds they don't do well at three thousand plus. No, they're they're, designed they for, do really well in the towing range. Yep. And they do okay up high and. But towing this thing's gonna be a beast. Anyway, so things we've decided: seven by twelve injectors. We think are probably oversized. Yeah, I think it's too much injector for the for what this guy wants to do with this truck. Yeah. I think we're going to go down, well, we're probably going to do another video and test, but I think we're going to go down a couple sizes and see. I'll bet we don't lose maybe even 20 horsepower. Go down a couple sizes of injector, clean up the idle haze, won't have to detune it as much with the Quadzilla. Yeah. Might get a little better fuel mileage with the smaller injector. And uh, like I said, there's no reason to smoke out the road. So. Yeah, especially if you're not getting the power loss. Not getting it. the power from it. Why, yeah. why do that? So. so this will be cool. So we're going to do a little bit of injector testing with this. This is kind of like a max effort stock BP44 build, which is kind of what you have available to you at this point in time, unless you're going to spend some big bucks for a P-pump swap. So we had another BP44 truck in here that was a pretty similar build. It was a single turbo, but it did right about the same power, didn't it? Yeah, I think it did 468 uncorrected. So, I mean, we're... Within one. And our best was... Yeah, we're within one horsepower. Yeah. So. so that's kind of the limit on this dyno. It's been right around there, and I'd forgotten about that. We pulled up some old charts, and we all found it. So Now, the dyno warriors out there, you say our dyno sucks, we admit, it's stingy. But if you think that we suck at building horsepower, we welcome you to come bring your truck, put on our dyno, and show how much power your 1,000-horsepower truck that <coughs> makes, <laughs> yeah. what, 680 was the last 1,000-horse truck we put on here. So yeah. it's definitely a heartbreaker. But, but it's accurate. It's, it's accurate. Real. You go run this at the drag strip, I'll bet you the weight will calculate right into a horsepower calculator, like within 5% or yeah. better. Yeah, it's been pretty good as far as predicting track times and predicting real power. So anyway, that's going to end this video. This truck has been real fun. Um, we're going to tune the smoke out some more with some injector. We got a lot of it out with the Quadzilla, which is pretty cool. But I think we can do a little better, and I don't think we're going to take a horsepower hit. And everything will be better. EGT control, um, the boost will still be there. Idle Haze, like we talked about, this will be a nice running truck. So stick around for the next episode of this truck. We'll probably get one more with this truck before the owner comes and gets it. Uh, we'll do some injector testing. That'll be fun to just to kind of see what we can get the max effort stock VP44. One last thing. If you are a VP44 guy and you're racing and you're in this predicament and you need to go just a little faster to hit whatever index, the secret is water methanol injection. If we were trying to help Todd win today, we would have thrown a water meth kit on there. We would have gotten the numbers. Because you have more fuel, yep. and that methanol helps it burn a little faster because you're limited to 30 degrees of timing with the Quadzilla, yep. we would have gotten there. But just, just a little tech tidbit. If you want a little more horsepower on your VP44, that's probably your cheapest option beyond that at this level is water methanol injection. But Still, this is a stinking fun truck to drive. I've been hot running this around for a day or two. Puts in my seat, toes great. No reason for a guy to look past the VP44 truck if, you know, 500 horsepower is your goal. Because you can get pretty dang close and it, it runs real good. All right, man. Thanks. See you next time. We will see you soon. Thanks.